starting with the first Starship launch in early 2023 and having conducted three launches since then, SpaceX has made some awesome changes and upgrades to its Starship program. One's got to ask if any other rocket company could do what SpaceX has done in just a year. I'm pretty sure no one could, not even the leading aerospace agencies of the world's superpowers with decades of experience. So, in today's episode of Alpha Tech, we're going to summarize all the latest changes that have made the Starship better than ever before. And before we get into the main content, we also want to say thank you so much for supporting our channel these last three years. Right now, we got over 86,000 subscribers, and we are very close to 100K. To achieve this, though, we need your help. So please, if you're watching right now, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way, you will never miss out on any of our exciting updates. And we do put these videos out for you to watch for free every day. Thank you so much for watching. And again, we really appreciate having you here. All right, let's continue. When it comes to Starship changes, the first thing we need to talk about is the modifications to the nose cones and the oxygen and methane fuel tanks of Starship's second stage. Recently, we got a first-hand look at the nose cones that SpaceX has decided to replace across the new variant of Starship. I'm not sure if they'll make further changes to the nose cones in the future, but what we're discussing here is the latest hardware that SpaceX is currently manufacturing. Zoom in closer to the nose cone design. In terms of shape when compared to the previous nose cones used on Starships up to Starship 32, these new nose cones are slimmer and longer. Of course, the base diameter still has got to be 9 meters. The lifting points at the nose have also been streamlined. This is where the lifting mechanism connects to stack the nose onto the lower sections. In the current version, each ship has 6 lifting points. V2, though, only has 4. This potentially reduces attack surfaces, and the four-point design could create more balance when lifting compared to the six-point design. Works progressing on these hardware components as their heat shield attachment points are gradually being completed. We'll have to wait a bit longer to fully understand all the new features on these nose cones. On top of that, both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks have been redesigned by SpaceX. The new slanted design includes an integrated funnel inside. The old one essentially had a single pipe sticking to the side, so this change could be related to managing fluids both horizontally and vertically, ensuring stable fuel flows at all stages of the flight and the spacecraft changes orientation or experiences various accelerations. Moreover, this change improves efficiency compared to the previous design, while the new version allows them to use the entire volume of the manifolds instead of leaving some at the bottom as the spherical manifolds did. The conical structure connected to the nose also replaces the previous struts. Let's look at the before and after versions of SpaceX's changes. Also located at the nose cone, the flaps have undergone changes that many have heard Elon mention after the fourth launch. Elon revealed that the position of the flaps would shift towards the lee side, Previously, the flaps were positioned symmetrically at a 180-degree angle, but now they'll form an angle of about 140 degrees. This adjustment helps the flaps avoid direct impacts during re-entry. Additionally, it seems that the flaps have been moved closer to the top of the ship. This change could improve maneuverability by shifting the control center of mass forward and balancing with the rear flaps. In terms of shape, the new flaps are smaller and sharper. The upper and lower edges are longer, while the trailing edge is shorter. The effectiveness of this design might be debatable, so feel free to discuss your thoughts down there in the comments. Along with the changes to the flaps, the heat shields in this area have also been upgraded. On the nose cone, the heat shield has been extended towards the lee side. This extension provides better protection for the vehicle and acts as a backup safeguard for the shield and the fuel tanks inside. Moreover, the thickness of the flaps seem to have been reduced to about half the current flaps thickness. Since the flaps have been moved towards the lee side to enhance safety, their mass can be reduced to optimize the Starship's design. This weight reduction will make the flaps more agile, thereby improving navigation efficiency. Additionally, the heat shields on the surface of the flaps are smaller. This change makes sense because smaller tiles are easier to attach, especially in the corner areas of the small component-like flaps. And it's not just the heat shields on the nose cone that have gotten upgrades. Elon's replaced the entire thermal protection system of Starship. These new heat shields are twice as durable as the old ones and have an additional layer of insulation underneath. We've discussed this extensively in earlier episodes, so in this show, we're going to focus on how SpaceX has improved both the manufacturing process and the insulation of these heat shields compared to what they did before. The difference is pretty clear when comparing the new heat shield of Ship 30 to the old one, which is still present on its newer counterpart, Ship 32. The first thing that stands out is consistency. The tiles on Ship 32 are scattered, with each tile seemingly having a different shade. 
In contrast, the heat shield on Ship 30 is much more uniform, differing only in the application method, particularly near complex areas like welds and sensor tiles. Some of this might be due to SpaceX's engineers immediately changing the production process, as SpaceX often does with other components like their engines. Another possibility is the inconsistency in manufacturing methods. SpaceX still has plenty of experience in producing expendable heat shields, but mass producing large reusable heat shields, well, that's going to require some initial learning. Either way, it's clear that the tiles on Ship 30 are much more consistent. Speaking of the new heat shield, Ship 30 might be the first to be equipped with this heat shield, but it's certainly not going to be the last. Of course, the change in height is something that cannot go unmentioned. The new version of Starship will be taller than the previous one. In fact, we learned about this when Elon announced two new versions, Starship V2 and V3, in April. While V2 is only 3.1 meters taller than V1, V3 has a surprising height, clearly representing an extended version. Starship V3 will stand about 150 meters tall instead of the 124.4 meters of Starship V2 and 121.3 meters of Starship V1, and it may even be taller than the current launch tower right now at Boca Chica. At that size, the two stages of Starship V3 are almost identical, with the fins appearing slightly larger and possibly even fixed in place. With these upgrades, Starship V3 will be able to hold 4,050 tons of fuel in the booster and 2,300 tons on the ship, compared to 3,650 tons in the booster and 1,500 tons in Starship V2. With the expected thrust improvements over Starship V1 and V2, V3 could increase from the 7,000-ton thrust of V1 to over 8,000 tons in V2. And finally, as Elon shared, V3 could go beyond 10,000 tons of thrust. This would result in Starship V3 having double the payload capacity of V2, exceeding 200 tons, surpassing all current vehicles. Another feature we might notice is that the hot staging of Starship V2 and V3 differs from V1. Instead of the original vent design, the new version of Starship will now have an interface similar to the N1-style interstage of the Soviet Union integrated into the ship. This has sparked much debate about the increased gravitational forces and how Starship will handle the very high pressures during flight. Finally, a very important improvement is SpaceX's brand new engine. SpaceX's groundbreaking design approach with a Raptor V3 engine is reshaping the aerospace industry. This approach is not just about improving existing technology, it's a comprehensive redefinition of how we think about rocket engines. One of the most important aspects of the Raptor V3 is the integration of components. Instead of having many separate parts, SpaceX is using advanced 3D printing technology to create complex structures with built-in functionalities. This not only reduces weight, but also improves reliability by minimizing the number of potential failure points. The removal of the external heat shield is a remarkable breakthrough. Instead of relying on external protective measures, SpaceX has designed the engine to withstand extremely high temperatures on its own. This not only reduces weight, but also simplifies the maintenance and preparation process for flights. SpaceX's focus on reducing the number of sensors is also noteworthy. While sensors are typically considered essential for monitoring engine performance, they can also be a source of failures. By designing an engine capable of self-regulation and tolerating some faults without external intervention, SpaceX is greatly enhancing the overall reliability of the system. In terms of performance, the improvement in the specific impulse of Raptor V3 is impressive. The increase from 330 to 350 seconds may not seem like much, but in the field of rocket engines, this is a significant step. It means that Starship will be able to undertake longer missions or carry more payloads with the same amount of fuel. SpaceX's design philosophy is also noteworthy for its flexibility. By building redundancy into the overall system through the use of multiple engines rather than each individual one, they can take greater risks in the design of a single engine. This allows them to push the boundaries of performance and innovation. Finally, SpaceX's approach to rapid and iterative development is changing the way the industry operates. Instead of spending years on a perfect design, they continuously improve and adjust, learning from each iteration and flight. This allows them to progress much faster than traditional methods. In addition, the new Raptor engine is breaking records in terms of performance. Although we don't yet have specific figures for the vacuum version, it's expected to have a superior specific impulse. Surprisingly, despite these significant improvements, the new engine's lighter than its predecessor. From 3,530 pounds, the weight's been cut by 170 pounds. An impressive achievement for a machine that can consume several tons of fuel a second.
This weight reduction was achieved by eliminating unnecessary components and applying advanced manufacturing techniques. SpaceX has minimized the number of flanges and welds, creating a more seamless structure. This not only reduces weight, but also improves reliability by eliminating potential failure points. However, the new design also brings challenges in maintenance. Elon has admitted that in some cases, the only way to access internal components is to cut the engine open. This is a trade-off SpaceX is willing to accept to achieve optimal performance. With 35 engines on a super heavy Block 2 or V2 booster, the total weight of the engine system, including related hardware, is about 60 tons, over a quarter of the total weight of the whole booster. Musk has mentioned that there are still many opportunities for further optimization, especially in reducing the weight of the hardware and the onboard propellant supply system. These improvements illustrate SpaceX's revolutionary approach to rocket engine design, where every gram is calculated and optimized for maximum performance. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.